Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So it's the end of May, so I just want to walk you around just to show you what's beautiful in the garden right now. So from this angle, you can kind of see the beautiful Crimson Queen Japanese maples. My Anna's Magic Ball actually is coming back and it's looking beautiful. There is some dieback on the other side of this one, but uh, it's hard to see from this angle. So here as a closer up and you can kind of see that Ducat uh, yellow double daffodils that I had that was be blooming beautifully early on in the season. And here are the three uh, salvia that I have, crystal blue salvia, and I think some of them are just starting to bloom. And for some reason, I feel like all that extra compost that I added in this season actually kind of made the salvia not look as good as it did last year. And from this view, you can see the beautiful foliage of the frosty white early bird dianthus. See that blue green? This is why I love combining different foliage, even though um, the plants are not in bloom, but you can see the contrast between the yellow uh, and a magic ball and the spruce here, as well as the foliage of the newly planted um, alyssum that I planted just four days ago. And uh, it's just really, really pretty, I think. And the blooms, I think, are almost ready to open up. So cannot wait for these to bloom. And here's a close-up of that boomerang re-blooming lilac that I have. I think it's bigger than what it was last year. Last year, I had so much dieback that um, I had to cut everything back. And this year, I think it's coming back pretty nicely. And lilacs is one of those plants that I think every garden should have at least one of these because the scent and the combination of colors and the blooms, I think just screams to me spring. Another beautiful thing about this is actually it will rebloom for me at the end of summer, early uh, fall. And here's another beautiful combination of that blue green color of uh, foliage that I was talking about. I love the blue green color of this fescue grass against the beautiful um, autumn joy sedum foliage there. And here is my most gorgeous early summer plant, which is the quick fire hydrangea. And this canopy, for those of you that know, uh, last year I lost a whole entire large branch. And I think this year it's actually filling in quite nicely. And if you look really closely here, you can kind of see the formation of the panicles on this quick fire hydrangea. Isn't that pretty? So there it is. It's in the little broccoli stage. So in the next couple of weeks, we should see them, um, you know, develop. And I think by the end of June or maybe possibly earlier, sooner, we might see the blooms of the quick fire hydrangea. And you can kind of see the uh, little broccoli uh, formation of the panicles on every single stem of this uh, quick fire hydrangea. So cannot wait to show you that in a couple, I would say three weeks or so. And last year, I don't know if you remember, this was actually not the earliest blooming hydrangea in my garden. It was actually the quick fire fab that actually bloomed about a week or so earlier than this variety. So this goes to show that the uh, climate of your garden zone actually very much dictates when these hydrangeas, and I would say even the, the microclimate of your garden actually will dictate when these will bloom in your garden as well. And look at that beautiful contrast between the crimson queen and uh, maple, Japanese maple and the lilac. Isn't that gorgeous? I really, really love that combination of colors. And looking at this uh, uh, spruce I have here, I just realized that I have a whole branch here that's dead. So I need to cut the, this off. And also I love the soft texture of the new growth. I think it feels really nice. And all of my banana cream daisies, I think they need to be divided soon. I can kind of see that the clumps are getting a little bit uh, sparse near the center. So I have one here that's sort of impeded by the growth of the spruce. So I need to kind of trim this off a little bit, give it more room for the um, daisies to grow. And same thing here. It's getting a little bit too crowded there. So time to divide and give some away to your friends and neighbors. 
I also have one right there, right next to this bow hole and underneath this crimson cream maple. Isn't this gorgeous? I love, love this. I think it's one of the most beautiful thing in the garden right now. So pretty. And here is a beautiful view of the three autumn joy sedum. Um, I love the compact growth of this plant. Um, I know some people recommend that you prune the tips or you, you sort of trim away the tips to encourage uh, more sort of branching and therefore more blooms, but I actually don't like it too wide. I find that with my garden, I don't have a lot of space. So that compact look, it's actually more preferred by me. And here's one plant that I always recommend that if you have a location that has poor soil, you know, little access to water, this is probably uh, one that you should plant because it actually does so well in those conditions that typically very few plants like. And here's the Mr. Bowling Ball Arborvita. Now this, I have four in the garden and for some reason, this one stays compact under that maple tree and this one here for some reason grows the biggest this one here remains compact i don't know why but they were all planted the same year but uh, for some reason this one grows massive and uh, this one's reasonably but this one it's still very compact compared to the other three and here in this corner here, you'll see that I have uh, many of my hydrangea plants that are in pots. I'm gonna come a little closer to show you what they look like right now. And here is one of the bobo uh, standards that I have in this pot. Um, it's been in this pot, I think this is its third year, but again, the timing, I could be a little wrong. I have some chives here, right in this uh, little pot here that are also winterized in that container. I have the, um, hydrangea that I grew from seed last year that also winterized in these containers and then I have one of the two vanilla strawberries that's in its second year as a standard right now. And here's one of the um, hydrangeas that I grew from seed last year. So officially it is uh, planted in a planter by itself. So I cannot wait to see it uh, bloom. Now I chose this one because I love the way that it branches on the side and it's got actually like a greenish color stem, which is very different than some of the other ones that I have um, from seed, uh, that grew from seed from last year. And here, is another one that I've actually planted by itself in a pot. I also like the branching of the um, this little baby hydrangea that I grew from seed as well. And I also chose this one specifically also because it's got that reddish color stem that I think that's really pretty. But also the leaf structure looks very different than the other one that I showed you earlier. So can't wait to see what the blooms look like. But I think this is what's exciting about uh, growing things from seed. You never know what you're going to get. So it's going to be a total surprise when you do see it bloom later on which is really really exciting for me and this one um, for some reason I chose it just because I'm actually interested in uh, seeing how tall it gets it does also have a greenish color stem it's actually a lot taller than the other one so instead of branching out it actually grew from where it left off last year and it's just continuing all the way up so that's really exciting so not sure what it's gonna be like, but uh, so far so good. It also has similar leaf structure to the one um, that I showed you earlier as well. So interesting to see how that's gonna turn out. And here are some more that uh, I still have in containers. I don't have anywhere to plant them. So I have to look for some larger container to transplant them in just to give them more room to grow. But that's gonna be something that I will have to look into another day. And here, I think this is one of the most exciting thing right now. Um, and what you're looking at is actually a serrata mountain hydrangea called Tiny Tough Stuff. Uh, it's supposed to grow, I think, two to three feet tall and wide. But what's most interesting to me about this plant is that it actually survived and um, winterized in this pot for me. And that is just really amazing to me because this apparently has a uh, hardy zone rating to zone five, I think. And apparently in this container, which is a double wall, a subwater container, it was able to survive through the winter for me. So I'm not sure what it is, but look how many um, 
I've got, uh, that's about to bloom on old wood. Isn't this interesting? I have so many. I forget to count, but uh, it looks like I have over 10 blooms on them. And also what's also interesting is you can see that it's got like growth all the way to the, you know, the stem that's, that's kind of survived from last year. So anyway, uh, if this is the case, I might start planting this um, in place of my, um, big leaf macrophylla hydrangeas because those even though they're planted in the ground they actually don't do as well uh by blooming on old wood as this variety so i don't know this is really really exciting so i can't wait to show you what that's gonna look like later on because i actually have never seen it bloom um so early in the season with so many while my macrophylla hydrangeas uh, all die back almost to the to the ground and here are the two spiral boxwoods that I have at the front garden. For those of you that seen the last uh, video, you know, probably noticed that I was picking caterpillars off them. So um, I think most of them should be gone. But yesterday when I was watering, I actually found a few of those boxwood moth flying from there. And I also just now saw a little bird in there hunting for caterpillars. So. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, that's just something that I think I have to figure out a better solution for. But anyway, moving on to more beautiful things. So here are two of the four of the Albert Dorf Alberta spruce that I've got. I love these because they actually have cohardy rating all the way to zone three. So they actually do very well for us in containers. And notice that the containers I have are just regular, you know, one layer and they're not even self watering and they do so well um, without, you know, needing much attention. So really love loving the structure of those in containers throughout the entire winter. So really pretty. But I also have to reshape them a little bit because you can kind of see that um, it's got some areas that have grown out fully uh, and it's got some areas that need a little bit of uh, cleaning up. So that's again, it's going to be done by my husband and that's probably going to be coming up in the next week or so. And looking at this hydrangea that I grew from seed last year, I noticed that some of the foliage, um, it's got some burn on it. So I'm not sure what happened, but possibly because um, of the cold frost nights that we had earlier in May that might have burned the, uh, the new leaves a bit. But I also noticed the color also looks a little bit lighter, not as that deep green like I have here on the bobo. So I wonder if something's wrong with the roots here as well. So not sure but I may have to do some investigation because these pots I actually don't really like them because they're actually quite at uh, the depth of the plant it's actually quite shallow so I may have to think about moving them somewhere but I love these pots here but this one not so much but anyway hopefully uh, it'll be okay but it looks like the new leaves are okay but just the old layers of leaves that actually um have more some burn on them so anyway something to think about and here's a beautiful close-up of the uh, blood good Japanese maple uh, this has been in this spot I think for four years <laughs> I don't quite remember but uh, I'm really really enjoying this in this spot right now and especially at this time of the year with the foliage it's that it's got that bright red that I really love and also um, for those of you that know we have the Japanese beetles and they usually come and attack this this is the first thing that it starts to feed on so usually you know the top half of the entire plant gets eaten by Japanese beetles so it's going to look pretty tattered in the next, uh, I would say, two, th three to four weeks or so. So I better enjoy this as much as I can right now. So really love it. And from here, you can see the iris that's blooming in this uh, island bed right here. So, so pretty. And isn't that pretty? I love the iris in that spot. I love that structure of the foliage. I love the fact that they all bloom and it almost look like a large bush. I think it's about three feet tall and about two and a half feet wide. And when they all come in bloom like that, so pretty. 
And for those of you that are new to the channel, um, this iris was actually gifted to me, so I actually don't know what the name of this variety is. And it didn't come in with a tag, so that's the problem. And I know somebody told me what it was, but I actually forgot and I didn't write it down. So if you know the name of this variety, please put it in the comments below. Thank you. Anyway, I love this color, that royal purple color, and I love how it connects back with the uh, boomerang lilac that I have there. So that continuation from one bed to the other, I think that's really, really pretty. And here is the crystal blue salvia that I have planted in this part of the garden. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this one seems to be so far ahead compared to the, the same variety that I have planted in the other garden bed. I'm not sure what it is, but everything here seems to do so much better than the other side of the garden. I wonder if it's because of the size uh, or being surrounded by concrete and not grass or something i'm not sure what it is but everything's here seems to bloom earlier do better so i am clueless as to what the reason is but really loving the crystal blue salvia here so pretty and from this angle you can actually see the beautiful bright red of the concord bro concord barbary and the background especially with the new growth i think that bright red that looks so pretty and here with these three bobos, um, I just checked now as I was filming, I noticed that I have many tips on the bobo that actually have buds on them. Isn't that amazing? I also have here as well. So I'm not sure what it is, but like I said before, everything in this bed always seemed to bloom sooner than everywhere else. So, and it's not because um, these don't get die back. These actually got die back um, almost to the ground uh, from all the snow that we piled on top. So anyhow, something always to think about, right? So really, really excited to see if these are going to be blooming as early as they normally do or even sooner, because I think we usually get these blooming at the end of June or early July. So really excited. And here's the onyx and pearls penstemon. I love this, but uh, I noticed that some of you um, actually like to pinch these back a bit just to get them to branch out a little bit more and produce more blooms. Um, and I think like, um, I actually have never done it on the pensamen before. So I was thinking about trying it this spring, but when I went to look, it was too late because I already saw some uh, buds of blooms on here. So if I pinch this off right now, I might not be able to uh, get them to flower again. So I didn't do it, but next spring, something to keep in mind um, on my calendar to remind myself to start to do some pinching just to get them to branch out more and hopefully get more flowers. And here you're looking at my Chelsea Clematis. This one has a sort of a pale purple, um, sort of blue color of blooms, which I really love. And I also love the fact that it's actually small and it, um, so you can even plant it in containers as well. And that's what I uh, was thinking of doing, but um, Clematis don't tend to do well for me and they don't winterize well for me in containers. So I uh, decided to plant it in the ground. So it turns out to be beautiful in this space. So I think it's really loving it. Um, but what I noticed the other day is that something actually ate all of the vines on this side. So it broke and so I had to cut all the way back. So I have a few more vines here that um, survive. And so the blooms are actually, I think, about to open. So that's really, really exciting. And here is a very woolly looking um, Alberta dwarf Alberta spruce. Um, you can kind of see that we, or not we, my husband, he pruned it into three layers. So that has to be uh, done soon because it's starting to fill in. It looks like a comb shape to me. So that's going to be done, like I said, probably by my husband when he has some time. So we're thinking of doing it next week. 
and here's one of the two um, quick fire fab that I have in containers. Um, I'm checking to see if I have any buds forming on here yet, but um, I don't see any. Or maybe it's starting to deform because I'm feeling the top here. It looks a little bit bulging out. So maybe, but um, it's looking really good. I also have one for, that I had in container last year that I gave my mom. So she's got one at home. But anyway, I have two in container and one on the ground. And here is the uh, piece of firelight hydrangea that I uh, got from the garden last year. And it had a little bit of roots, so I actually took that and planted in the container. And it did so well for me last year. So this year I decided to move to the front just to have something different at the front garden. So really loving the structure of that plant here. So here's the second uh, vanilla strawberry trees that I created last year. And I'm gonna come a little closer just to see, just to show you how much the trunk has grown since then. I don't know if you remember, but last year it pretty much looked like this, or maybe a tiny bit uh, wider than this, but look how much it has grown so much so for those of you that are um wondering whether or not the um you know tree will grow if they do once they get established panicle hydrangeas they grow so fast so in no time you'll see that it will grow into a much bigger tree like the ones that i have in the back and here's the quick fire uh, fab that I have in ground. So I just want to give you a quick date because the last time I showed you, um, I think it had a little bit of chlorosis. So I quickly acidified the soil by giving it a little bit of fresh coffee um, that I actually was drinking at the time. So I gave it a little bit of black coffee, which I diluted down with some water. And then on top of that, I did add a little bit more of the used coffee grounds that I normally give to my hydrangeas in the spring. So you can kind of see the color is looking much better now but in terms of blooming i noticed that this one here no buds forming on any of these tips yet so it looks like this year this one might be a little bit behind compared to the original quick fire uh, hydrangea tree that i have in the other garden bed so here i am in the back back garden and you can see the limelight here this was one that i trained three years ago and i also have this beautiful um container of incredible hydrangeas here i really love this and i think they look like they're a little bit of uh, uh, ahead in terms of blooming so lots and lots of buds on them so i think in the next two uh, three weeks or so they should be blooming and normally i like to sit here in the evening so just to kind of have that beautiful view here I think that was gonna look really pretty so here in the background you can kind of see the same iris that I had in the back and here I have a bush of the Marlowe Columbine and I actually had another one in the back there that's looking really beautiful and this I think um, came to the garden I don't know I think two years ago so look at the beautiful blooms look at that is that pretty I think that's really really gorgeous and i love that sort of pale purple pink that i really love in terms of blooming around this time and here i have three bushes of the happy returns the lady is actually a reblooming lily um, they look a little bit uh, messy so i was uh, going to divide them last fall and things just got really busy and, and uh, i totally forgot about it so i'm gonna put a reminder for myself to actually divide them uh, this fall and here I have the William Morris uh, David Austin Rose. And I don't really know if you remember, but last year I thought I had lost it and um, it started to come up from the ground really late in season. So luckily I didn't remove it, but uh, there's actually buds forming on them right now. So can't wait to see that because this is one of my favorite roses. I love the compact petals that it has. And here's the firelight tidbit. Um, I actually um, don't really like this variety, especially for our zone, because it bloomed for me so late in the season that I didn't get to enjoy it all that much. So I think for us, because we have such a short summer uh, season, it's nice to have early blooming hydrangeas. So for those of you that live in warmer garden zones, this might be the one uh, for you to plant if you want that beautiful you know, color 
in late summer and uh, fall because this is probably a better variety I think for um, warmer garden season or people in the south where they've got a much longer gardening season. And here behind these happy, uh, happy return day lilies are the bobo hydrangeas that I have. And these are actually truly one of my most favorites. And I say this all the time. And that's because it's actually early blooming for us. And especially, um, you know, when you have so few months of um, growing season, any bloom that you get early on this season means that you have so many more months to enjoy them until the winter sets in. So really, really a beautiful plant overall. And here I have more bobos along here and they are also doing really well as well. Many buds have already formed on those. And here I have a whole row of the Remember Me hostas. And for me, that every uh, leaf there actually looks like a petal. And the entire plant to me looks like a giant flower. So I really love hostas at this time of the year because they brighten up, especially this variety, they brighten up this whole entire garden. And it's really lovely, lovely view from the inside of the house. And here are more of the obrecha um, blooms that I have. And again, some of them look like they've set seed as well. So I'm gonna be collecting them and uh, plant them for the front garden. Another close-up of this beautiful Barlow Columbine. So pretty. And here is the Marie Rose, the David Austin Rose, a sort of a whitish yellow uh, rose that I have in this uh, part of the garden. So here is a sad update I have to give you. This is one of my Lytro Angel uh, David Austin roses. So for some reason, it did not survive. It had one green stem early on the season. And so for some reason, it's also dying. So nothing is coming up from the ground. So I'm not sure what the the issue is but it doesn't look like it's doing well and then I have the other one which is the Evelyn Rose and earlier on in the season I did see some green growth there but it looks like something is killing it from the below ground because as soon as it's formed it wilts and dies so I'm not sure what it is but it uh, looks like uh, I may have to replace them with something else because I have looked everywhere and I have not seen Light Show Angel or Evelyn Roses yet. So I'm gonna go hunting um, for maybe possibly a new variety to plant in the garden next year. Well right next to the uh, Evelyn Rose I have a Columbine. This is this beautiful Columbine. This one also is a new variety that I started seeing last year so really beautiful. And here is the Sarah Elizabeth uh, clematis that I have. And I don't know if you remember, remember, but I planted this fall of two years ago in the fall. So last year was its first year in the garden and this year is its second year. So you can kind of see that it's starting to creep up the uh, trellis here, but lots and lots of, um, you know, blooms and buds on here though. I see some look like they're about to open. So really beautiful. And I love the fact that it, comes really dense and it's low lying so I'm hoping that eventually it will start to grow up because I think it's supposed to be about four to five feet tall so can't wait to see how it's going to do next year. So looking at this um, Rose Maria, Marie Rose, I always forget the name. Um, it looks like there's a bud that's about to open here. Isn't that exciting? I love that and on closer inspection I can see that I have some aphids on my roses so I'm gonna go make a soap spray solution with some vinegar and baking soda to spray on them now. Oh, I think I also have some over here as well. And tuck right here in this corner between my Maynite Salvia and my um, Rosemary is a beautiful purple color Columbine. I think that's really gorgeous. It looks like um, there are some that have already uh, faded. This started blooming for me about two, three weeks ago. So still some that are coming along. And here I have the um, Invincible Wee White. This is going to bloom very soon. You can see lots and lots of buds on here. And right next to that Invincible Wee White is another variety of uh, uh, Columbine that I have. Now this one is also 
a beautiful one as well. Look at that lovely color. I think it's beautiful. It looks to me like a similar variety of a Barlow, but I don't actually know what it is. But these are again, this one um, was new to the garden a couple years ago, so really pretty. And I have one light pink here that's about to finish blooming. I love this beautiful sort of pale pink color. I think that's really pretty. And right over here is one of the two Eglantine roses that I have. Now this one did not survive. So luckily one tiny cane survived. So it's starting to uh, form a new cane up here now. So hopefully it's going to thrive because it looks like um, it's not doing all that great. But I'm happy to report that all of my Serrano lilies survive. It's growing bigger and taller and more uh, vigorous every single year. And looking at the lily, or the Serrano lilies that I have, look at the number of uh, tree lilies that I have. I think this one, there's at least, I don't know, six, seven of them. And I have the same number on that side. So when they do blooms, the garden is going to be filled with the lily scent which is really I think really intoxicating in a good way that is and here's the lava lamp flare hydrangea so just like the bobos that I have this one also um, I have lots of bare stems here so I'm not sure what it is but um, many have just started to leaf out right so you can kind of see that I'm not sure what it is but again I can only think of one reason which is because of the ice storm that we had uh, must have shocked these and killed off all of the uh, buds or it could be the late frost that we had um, this uh, spring that uh, killed the buds so they have to reform from the beginning so I'm not sure what it is but it looks like it's going to be behind in terms of uh, filling in for this season and here I have more of the columbine um, blooms. So this one is a little bit of a different variety, but uh, much larger in size and um, beautiful color as well. And then I have one here that's sort of a pinkish red color that's really pretty as well. And here I have on the trellis two clamatid. That's the Giselle and that's the Cezanne. Uh, Cezanne, it's in its second year and the Giselle, I think it's in its th third year. I, I forget now, but I love the, the uh, Giselle clematis just because you can kind of see, look, it's got buds forming all the way from bottom to the top of the entire vine, which is really amazing. And it's also earlier blooming for me this year. Now that could be that I had a few vines in here that was, um, you know, that was left on. I didn't prune them all the way back to the ground like I normally do. So this could be some uh, blooms that form on those vines, but nonetheless, I think it's just really gorgeous. And here's the other uh, angling tine rose. I do have some buds forming, but I also have something that is eating the buds as well. Look at that. I don't know what that is, but I may have to again spray it with the same uh, vinegar solution that I'm going to make later. So I see a few buds, not as many, like I said, on my other roses, but not too bad. And here are more columbine blooms. This one, I think you've seen before. I've had this variety in the past and it's got like a pale purple pink shade of uh, color that I think it's really pretty as well. And here is the uh, same pale pink variety of columbine that I have uh, earlier. And I don't know if you noticed, but these columbines, they have blooms that face up. They look up at you. So that, I think, makes them really pretty because they are just so gorgeous. And I want to be able to see them from afar. So if they're facing down, I'm not, be able, I'm not able to see them. And I think that's what makes them extra beautiful when you can actually see their faces, right? Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? And tucked under this pale pink, there is a purple variety that you probably saw earlier as well. Really pretty. And here we're coming closer to the three or group of three light your angel roses. And you can kind of see that they are loaded with buds. So I think they're going to be opening very soon for me. So can't wait to see how they're going to be this year. But it looks like there are lots and lots of buds on them. 
And here's the trellis that contains the Westerplatte and the Pilu Clematis. Now this one I think is going to be behind uh, in terms of blooming for me this year because um, I had it die back all the way to the ground. So no buds on it yet. So compared to the other one, it's a little bit behind, I think. But I think it's doing pretty well here uh, in terms of filling in this uh, trellis. Actually, I lie. I do have some buds on the top there. But I'm not sure if it's the Pilu or the Western Platte variety. And here's another beautiful columbine as well in this part of the garden. Um, the thing about columbine is that they bloom sort of so early or on in the season that while you're waiting for your summer perennials to come in, you can actually tuck a few columbines and have them bloom for you uh, the, at, around this time of the year. So for those of you in warmer garden season, you might see them blooming a little bit earlier. But for me, I usually find that they start blooming for me in mid to late May. So really pretty and here I have some more of those pale pink columbine again and some of my faded uh, finola tulips that I need to deadhead and right in this part of the bed it's my nap cap pajamas napada isn't that pretty I love this color so you can kind of see I have many many columbines that have this sort of bluish tone color blooms which I think is really pretty and here from this side of the garden, you can see that uh, Janter cedar that I tried to rescue uh, last year. It's not doing so great. I've been meaning to get rid of it and replace it with something else, but I haven't had a chance to, uh, you know, uh, do that yet. So I have to do that soon. But there is a bobo bush that I divided last year. It's doing well in here. And I also have a, another bobo standard. And I think it's starting to bud up as well. So can't wait really beautiful and I'm going to underplant it with some annuals which um, I haven't had a chance to do it yet so I also have a container of spring onions here that I uh, grow and you can kind of see here um, it's the I have more of the same serrano lilies but this one here it's the white it's a sonic bloom in the pearl color and you can kind of see that cover in bloom so in about I think maybe possibly next week I can see some of them look like they're about to open so I might be seeing blooms very soon and also this is a reblooming so we usually get to see it uh, bloom twice a year so after the first bloom I usually prune it back a little bit and then uh, it normally reblooms for me but the second bloom is never that great so usually it's the first one that is um, sort of more um, sort of intense and and more beautiful but here it is this beautiful columbine this one is actually a new variety for me um it must have uh, seeded um or it must have uh, crossbred between the other varieties that i have in the garden but um, this is the first time that i'm seeing it in my garden and i don't know if you remember but i started out planting two varieties of columbine so i ended up having so many different colors now the barlow was new i think last year but this one, I think it's a similar variety as the Barlow, but the size of the bloom is much bigger and the color is much more intense. And also, I don't know if you noticed, but the blooms are actually facing up. Whereas that Barlow pink that I showed you early, the blooms actually face down. So I'm not sure what it is, but I think this to me is most beautiful right now. I love that blue purple color and I love the two-tone effect of the petals as well along with the fact that it faces up, which I think is really beautiful. So anyhow, I think I'm going to uh, stop the video here. I want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now.